Okay, so here's our phase one prototype for the Solchar toilet system. Uh, so we concentrate solar power using parabolic mirrors that concentrates uh, the solar flux 2,000 times onto these quartz rods, transmits the, the, the energy flux through fiber optic cables, and heats up a pyrolysis reactor uh, just by direct illumination of the concentrated solar up to temperatures of 300 degrees C or more, producing a, a useful end product, biochar, from raw fecal sludge. So usually when this thing goes on sun, you can see it tracking. And it finds the sun and then you see the quartz rods start to glow. And that's where all that, that, that high energy flux is entering the system. It comes down the reactor and comes down to, through fibers to the reactor and uh, eventually heats up the reactor, drives off all the water, and, and then eventually uh, drives pyrolysis. Um, the system takes about four hours to run, after, uh, so after which five people, you know, anywhere from four to six people's waste will be converted into uh, biochar. Um, so, a little more about the fiber optics. This drops the solid waste onto a sand the Oh, okay. So, these fiber optics are, are fused borosilicate glass. So, it's just Pyrex glass, essentially. And it, they, people use it in any lab. And it's fused on the ends so that there's no interstitial space between each fiber. And there's something like five or 10,000 fibers in here. The, uh, the light enters and is transmitted by total internal reflection all the way down through these flexible, flexible glass fibers. It allows us to take the energy all the way to the reactor, wherever the reactor might be. And our system is designed for a urine diverting squat plate. So urine is diverted to a separate tank that is also treated with solar energy. Uh, just with a, a simple uh, solar water heater that, gen that uh, brings the urine up to temperatures of 70 degrees C or higher for about an hour, rendering all the pathogens uh, inactive. Um, let's see what else there is. Uh, so if you show us what happens to the separation, where the urine is going, and then what actually happens to it. Okay. So urine comes down from the, from the front of the squat plate into this collection tank, where then it's, it's, uh, it's fed into this insulated tank. The system is, the tank is closed off and a pump engages, circulating the urine up through, um, up through to our, our, solar, our solar water heater. So that's just when, when it, um, it's heated up by direct and indirect solar and uh, is able to, to bring up the temperature of our urine stream to about 70 degrees C in a matter of in a, in only a couple of hours. Does it also evaporate the urine? It doesn't. It just it only going to 70 C or so. Okay, so here we'll demonstrate the reactor and collection vessel uh, changing mechanism. Okay, what we what we uh, affectionately call the dump and undump. So go ahead, Dana. So it's a really low power motor, but high torque motor, low voltage, low amperage, and it requires very little battery power because this, this only happens once or twice a day. And so we have a cam lever arm with a wheel that rides up this ramp and dumps the, the vessel over, knocking out any char that's present that's inside after pyrolysis, and then another ramp that flips it back over into the proper collection uh, orientation. And then we have really simple uh, sensors that detect when the carousel is back in its home position so that the vessels are situated directly underneath the toilet on one end and the solar hood on the other end where the fiber optics and power of our system come into, come into, the, into the equation. 
So the sole char sanitation process generates char as a useful byproduct. Um, and this is some char that we've made at the fair. So for out of the simulant provided to us, so we make it at about 300 Celsius in limited oxygen. We've been investigating using it both as an agricultural amendment because it has a lot of uh, good nit nutrients, nitrogen, um, for adding to soil. And then we've also been looking at its energy content potentially for using it as a solid fuel. So we found that it has uh, an energy content that's similar to regular charcoal briquettes, so about 26 megajoules per kilogram, which is pretty considerably high. So we've begun testing these briquettes um, to look at their cooking efficiency in a typical residential cooking heating scenario. And a couple of days ago we made these roasted peanuts on our charcoal briquette stove, <laughs> which is pretty great. So um, we're pretty excited about looking into this further and seeing what kind of a value this has in the, in the markets that we would be deploying in.